Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be discussing how we can utilize DynamoDB with our .NET application. We're gonna be going through step by step of how we can create the DynamoDB tables either through the AWS CLI or the Terraform. Once that's done, we're gonna be seeing how we can configure our application to utilize DynamoDB. We're gonna be building a DynamoDB service where we can inject it into our controller. As well, we're gonna be building all of the current operations. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I have all of my dependencies available on my machine. I want to make sure that my AWS CLI is installed, Terraform and my .NET SDK. Once we do that, we're going to be creating our DynamoDB through the AWS CLI and then we're going to be recreating through Terraform. And the reason that we want to create it through Terraform is we want to make sure that we have the same configuration for our table across different environments so through, through development, QA, pre-prod and prod. And that way we make sure that my DynamoDB table is created every single time in the same configuration, all these different environments. And once we have done that, we're going to be start updating our .NET API in order for us to be able to utilize DynamoDB there. So let's get started. So first things first, inside my AWS, uh, my terminal, I'm just gonna check my latest version of .NET, so .NET dash dash version. And as you can see here, I have the latest version by the time of this recording. Then I'm gonna put brew install AWS CLI. I have already installed this. In, in your case, yeah, it might install right now. And then brew install Terraform. And these are going to be the main three items that I'm going to be needing. So once we have done that, the next step is make sure you run AWS configure. And once you run AWS configure, what you're doing here is you're actually configuring your AWS CLI on your local machine by providing it the actual credential that's going to be able to, uh, to let the CLI to connect to your AWS account and execute all of the commands there. It's really important that you do this step right now in order for you to make sure that everything is running as it should be. So. I'm not going to go through the configuration process, but make sure you do that. Now that we have done that, the next step is we want to create our DynamoDB through the AWS CLI. And for that, we're going to put AWS DynamoDB create create dash table. And then we're going to specify the table name. I'm going to call it F1 app data v2 and something to note here make sure that the database name it is unique so for example inside your uh, dev environment make sure you separate it from your uh, production qa so for that just put here for example dash dev or something like that then we're gonna have to specify some attributes attribute definitions and then here we're gonna specify the attribute name and the first one, we're just going to put driver and it's going to be of the attribute uh, type equal s, which stands for string. And I'm going to specify another attribute. I'm just going to call it team and the attribute type. It's also going to be s. Then I'm going to specify my key schema with the attribute name equal the driver and the key type equal hash and the attribute name equal team and the key type equal range and lastly we're going to specify the provision type provision provisioned provisioned dash throughput and we're going to put the read capacity unit equal five 
and the right capacity unit also equal to 5. So as you can see here that there is a lot of stuff that we need to specify in order for us to create our table. So we start by our table name. Oops. We start by our table name. And then basically we specify by the definitions, which is all of these. And then basically these are the main two columns that we want. And then we're going to have our key schema and their types. And then basically we go to the provision throughput. And you can see this might cause a lot of errors down the road if we can try to duplicate, uh, duplicate this uh, uh, across different uh, environment. Let's execute this. And you can see here that I have misspelled something, missing parameters inside. Uh, let's see how we can fix this. So I already have it, read capacity unit, units, I put unit. See, that's why we need Terraform. And now we can see that I have also put something else wrong. So let's clear this up and uh, let's try this again. So for some reason I put attribute type 2 and it should be S for string. Let's fix it right now. Let's see now. Okay. One validation member must be enum value hash and range. We already have hash and we already have range. Let's try it again. Let's organize it in a better way. So I think this is much more clearer for us to be able to read. So we can see here that I have my create table, my F1 data app. I'm just going to make sure this is in dev. And then I have my attribute definitions. Perfect. My key schema as well, my provision throughput. And now if I execute this, perfect. We can see my table is created. It was all down to mistyping. So now if I log into my AWS account, so as you can see here that I have my DynamoDB table already available. I can see here that I have my F1 app data. If I click on it, we can see that everything is there. We can see all of the different configuration that I have provided is here. We don't have any access on this table right now. We don't have any types of monitoring because we're not currently using it. So on and so forth. So that's really good, but I don't really need this right now because we're going to be recreating it through uh, Terraform. So I'm just going to put confirm and I'm going to delete it because we don't really want to be charged for something that we're not going to be using. So now I'm going to go to Rider and basically what, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be using the application that we have created previously, which is our base application. It contains all of the basic implementation. We have a CRUD operation there. We have a connection to our, our SQLite database and so on and so forth. If you're interested in learning how we did that, I'm going to link the video here somewhere on top so you're able to watch it. But basically, we're going to be building on top of that. So here what I did is I have created a new folder inside my application. And then basically inside of it, I created a new file called dynamodb.tf. And inside this dynamodb.tf is where I'm going to put all of my Terraform code in order for me to create my table. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to specify my Terraform providers. So I'm going to put the required versions and I'm going to make sure that it is at least one or higher. Then I'm going to specify my required providers. And in this case, I'm utilizing AWS. So I need to specify that it is AWS and I need to specify the source for it. And this one is going to be HashiCorp. Sounds like evil core, but anyway, and then we're going to put AWS and I'm going to specify the version that I'm going to be using and it's going to be at least bigger than uh, bigger or equal actually than 4.59. So now that I have specified my initializers, then I'm going to specify right now my resource. Oops. And this is going to be AWS underscore dynamodb underscore table and I'm going to call this uh, resource of one table and just to me just to uh, highlight something here that the name that I'm giving here is not going to be the name which is going to be reflected inside my AWS this name here is basically my local variable that I'm going to be utilizing inside my Terraform in order for me to refer to this the name that currently you see here is going to be basically what can be reflected inside AWS. So for this one, I'm just going to call it F1 app 
data and we can call it uh, let's call this def one and now I'm gonna specify my billing mode and I'm just gonna say it's provisioned once we have done that then I'm gonna specify my read capacity and this is exactly what we specified inside my terminal before and then I'm gonna specify my write capacity then I'm gonna specify my hash key and in this case gonna be driver name and my range key which is gonna be team name then I'm gonna specify the attribute and it's gonna be driver name and it's gonna be of type string and another attribute which is gonna be my team name and it's gonna be of type string then I'm gonna specify my time to live and then here we're gonna specify the attribute name and I'm gonna put time to exist and I'm gonna make sure it is not enabled for this uh, example and then here I can specify my tags and uh, inside my tags I can put name I can call it the same thing that I called it here so let's copy this name I can also say my environment and I'm gonna say here dev so basically this is my AWS code sorry my Terraform code for my DynamoDB table and if we take a look at it here let's make sure everything first is running so I'm gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna navigate to my Terraform and let's clear this up and what I'm gonna do here first of all is gonna be Terraform in it basically I'm initializing Terraform inside my folder and if you take a look here on the left hand side stuff is gonna start to pop up once that is done then what I want to do is I want to put Terraform and let's clear this up and let's close this I'm gonna put Terraform plan and this should tell me if there's any uh, mistakes inside my code and as you can see here if we take a look through the code we can see that it's going to create for me a DynamoDB table with all of the names that I have provided. The ARN is going to be created afterwards, etc. Et so all I'm going to do right now is Terraform apply. But before I run that, I'm just going to go through quickly through the code so we can just do a quick revision. So basically here what I have is I have my Terraform. I specified the required version as well as the provider. Then I have specified here my resource, uh, which is going to be the DynamoDB table. I gave it a name, the billing mode, the write and read capacity, my hash keys. Then I specified my attributes. Once I've done that, specified the tags and the time to live. So with all of that, I'm just going to run it right now. I'm going to put yes. And this will take maybe a few seconds, 30 seconds. And you can see here it has been created successfully. Now if I go back to my uh, portal, if I click on refresh, you can see here that I have my uh, table automatically created for me. I have seen the table name. I can see everything here is being created. Perfect. So now with that in place, and now I know that I can manage my Terraform. And the nice thing about this as well, let's say I want to remove this, I can put terraform destroy and basically right now it this will actually delete the table so I click yes and if I go back to tables uh, it's just finished yeah if I click on refresh you can see the table is gone if I want to recreate it I put terraform apply I run it again it's gonna ask me do you want to create it I'm, say, I'm gonna say yes And now it's created and now if I click on refresh, you will be able to see here that my table has been recreated. Perfect. So now that we have done that, the next step for us is going to be actually uh, creating or uh, embedding uh, DynamoDB inside our services. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new project. And this project is going to be a class library. I'm going to call it formula dot dynamo db uh, 
Dynamo services. I can call it whatever I want. This is just for a demo. And just to make sure that we have this separation of concerns. And now that I have created it, I'm gonna delete the default class that it comes with it. So I'm gonna come here and click on delete. Yes, delete. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to that Formula One Don Dynamo services. And I wanna uh, install here a new get package. And this one is gonna be .NET add package, which is gonna be AWS SDK dot Dynamo DB V2. And once we install this, this will allow me basically to have all of the required configuration in order for me to utilize my DynamoDB within my .NET application. Perfect. So to verify that it has been installed successfully, I'm just gonna come here, edit, edit CS Proj, and we can see here that my .NET, my AWS SDK has been installed successfully. Perfect. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna install some AWS packages inside my main application. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my API, formula1.api, I'm gonna clear this. And here I'm gonna put .NET add package. And this one is gonna be pretty straightforward, AWS SDK.core. And basically this will allow me to actually connect through my, diff, um, my profile for AWS, which exists currently on my machine. And this uh, will allow me to actually have the di directly the configuration, my key, my secret, and the region that I prefer directly from there. So I don't have to hard code them inside my um, application, which is really good. And the last thing that I wanna do is install a, another extension for .NET, which is gonna be .NET add package. Actually, let's clear this up so we can see it better. So it's gonna be .NET add package AWS SDK dot extensions dot not core not core dot setup perfect so now if I go here to my formula one I go to edit CS Proj we'll be able to see that I have my AWS core available as well my AWS extension dot not core setup perfect once I have done all of that let's clear this up my favorite command is gonna be .NET build. And we can see everything is building. Okay, perfect. Did we get six building successful? Yes, we did. Great. Now that we have done that, the next step, let's close this, is inside my formula1.dynamodb services, I'm gonna create a new directory. And this directory is gonna be called repositories. And inside my repositories here, I'm gonna create another folder called interfaces. I'm just creating my structure right now. Then I'm gonna create another directory. I'm gonna call it DTOs. And I'm gonna create another directory and it's gonna be called settings. So basically here what I'm doing, I'm trying to structure my class library to contain basically all of the information that I might need. So once I have done that, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna create my driver DTO. And this is basically gonna be the object that's gonna be living inside my database. So I'm gonna create here a uh, new DTO. I'm gonna call it driver DTO. And it's gonna be uh, pretty straightforward. So if we take a look at our table, what do we have inside? We have, let's say I'm gonna explore items and I'm gonna create a new item. It's gonna ask us for the driver name and team name. So this is gonna be the first two things that we're gonna be needing. So we're gonna put prop string and I'm gonna put the driver name. Uh, I'm gonna say equal string dot empty. And the other one is gonna be team name. Perfect. And I'm gonna just add driver number. So let's add it here. And the last thing that I want to add potentially could be date of birth. So this is all by itself is good, but there's still some stuff that we need to add because basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that these are actually uh, 
uh, serializable for DynamoDB and it, so it will able to identify them. And for that, we're gonna put some JSON property, JSON property name, and I'm gonna make sure this is called driver name. Just gonna copy this. And this one's gonna be team name, driver number, and date of birth. And let's put this lowercase. Okay, perfect. So once I have done that, I just wanna explain quickly the difference between a partition key and a sort key. And in order for me to do that, I'm just gonna go to draw.io. Let's say we have a delivery company. And within this delivery companies, we have these different drivers. So let's copy this, copy this, copy this. So all of these are basically going to a certain warehouse where the delivery is gonna, they're gonna be perfect. So once I have all of these different drivers and basically I'm gonna put this, uh, we can say warehouse one, This is gonna be warehouse two, warehouse three, and warehouse four. So I have all of these different warehouses, and basically what I wanna do here is I want to make sure that, for example, if I'm selling laptops, all of my laptops are gonna be directly within these warehouses. So I have all of these warehouses here, so these warehouses are allocated for technology, for example, and these warehouses here are, I'm gonna call it 1A, so 2A, 3A, and 4A. So the first set of warehouses that I have, let's, uh, utilize this. So this first set of warehouses is going to be only only for home appliances. And this one here is going to be only for computers. Perfect. So let's say right now I have a user, which is someone who just bought a computer. And this computer is going to be a Mac and the uh, I wanna get that computer from these warehouses in order for me to start actually getting uh, the, to, to process my order. So this user here needs to go to any of those warehouses in order for me to get this uh, computer. So the reason that I wanted to have these two separations, we can think about these as two separate databases. So what we have done here is we have, instead of having all of these products in the same database, once we have different types of product, it makes sense to have two different databases to store them in a non-SQL databases. So that's the first part. The second part is we need to understand what is the uh, partition key and what is the sort key. So the partition key here is, although we have all of these four different warehouses and all of these four different warehouses are actually selling laptops, but we have different brands. So this one could be for Lenovo, this one could be for uh, Apple. This one could be for Microsoft. And this one could be for Dell, for example. So the partition key means here is it's gonna allow me to specify the direct partition that I want in order for me to find my data. So instead of me, uh, or instead uh, like a, the person who's gonna get my laptop or the user, instead of actually going to a Lenovo warehouse checking, do you have a laptop here? No, I don't. Then it will go to warehouse number three. Do you have uh, uh, MacBooks here? No, I, no, they don't. 
then they go to warehouse 4. Do you have MacBooks here? No, they don't. Then at the end, they'll come to warehouse 2 and then actually they find what they need. So instead of going all of these different processes to try to find it, a partition key will allow them to directly recognize that this, the, based on the request they're receiving, they will be able to get this exact same data. So my, the data inside my database is basically broken down into different sections based on this partition key. And whenever I have to search for something or get some information, it will only go to that partition key based on the data that I provided rather than try to scan all of the different information inside my database. And this is the power of non-sequent database because those partition keys will play a crucial role in performance. So now that I have specified my partition, my uh, partition key and it's going to be Apple here and I'm basically I'm able to know uh, my information there. Now I need to specify my sort key and we can say my sort key inside this is basically let's say uh, Apple sells different types of products. So we have uh, let's say MacBook Pro, we have MacBook Air, we have the Mac Studio, we have the Mac Mini, and we have the uh, Mac Pro. So within all of that, so all of this information are basically stored here. But how will I know where exactly inside this warehouse my information is being stored or my products are being stored? So for example, this user just bought a MacBook Pro. So this user wants a MPP. So instead of going through all of the different sections inside my warehouse, when I utilize my sort key, it will allow me to sort the information inside this warehouse in a way where I can actually go directly to that area and get my information here. So if I have a section directly uh, sorted for MacBook Pros, instead of going through all of these different computers in order for me to find the one that I need, I can just sort them based on the data that I am provided with and get the data from there. Uh, explain the difference between a partition key and a sort key and why do we need them. And basically, and the, the role that they play inside DynamoDB, it's really important for us to understand them because it could affect greatly the performance that we might have. So again, if you have any questions on this, please make sure you mention them in the comments down below. So now that we have went through these, let's go back to our code. And here we could, uh, I'm just going to add a comment. So here, this is going to be my partition key. And my table name is going to be, my team name, sorry, is going to be my sort key. I'm going to put a few information there. It's not going to be uh, a lot of data where I can actually utilize this benefit, but just something to illustrate inside your application. So once I have done that, the next step is I want to go to my interfaces and I'm going to add a new interface and I'm going to call this interface uh, I Dynamo DB actually just Dynamo driver repository repository and it's going to be pretty straightforward so I'm going to specify my task which is going to return a driver DTO and I'm going to make it nullable and I'm going to call this get by ID or get by, yeah, ID, get by sort key. Let's keep it by ID, it's easier. And here we're gonna require the driver name and the driver team because we're gonna utilize the sort key and the, what is it? The partition key and the sort key in order for us to get this information. So that's gonna be the first thing. Second, it's going to be the add so it's going to return boolean and it's going to be add and it's going to be driver dto and it's going to be entity then we're going to have the update and then we're going to have the delete something that i want to mention here is you noticed here that I did not add the all, get all drivers. Uh, sorry, get all, yeah, got all the drivers. Why did I not add it here? Because basically, if we think about it when it comes to DynamoDB, the way we are storing this data is we want it to be optimized to be able to retrieve the data that we need in a shortest amount of time. If we want to get everything inside our database, we are able to do it. It's actually, we are able to implement it. But 
if we want to think about the performance hit, if we go back to our example here, it means that when, whenever we are doing a select, our request is going to go through warehouse one. It's going to check that. It's going to get all of the information inside warehouse one. Then it's going to have the partition key and the sort key for warehouse one. Then it's going to go to warehouse two. Partition key, sort key, and get all of the information from there. Three and four is going to be the same thing. So it's very, very, very inefficient. It's not basically what we need to do when it comes to managing DynamoDB's data. It's not a way where we can just export all of the data that we have there. What we want to think about it in a way where we can actually uh, get the information that we need directly out of our database rather than dump all of the information out because we are basically not utilizing the best performance or we're not utilizing DynamoDB in its right uh, the way it's meant to be utilized. So that's something that we're not going to be adding here, which is going to be the all because it's going to be like a uh, invalidating the purposes of utilization. So we're going to only be building these four, get by ID, add, update, and delete. And the other stuff that I'm also going to be adding is inside my settings here. I'm going to add a new class. I'm going to call it my DB settings. And this will allow me to actually inject the configuration from my uh, app settings directly into my application through the, the dependency injection. And basically it's going to mimic the same structure that I'm going to be adding inside my uh, app settings. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. So it's going to be private, actually public const string. I'm going to call it section name. And this is going to be my DynamoDB tables. And the other one is going to be public string drivers table. It's going to be get set and it's going to be equal to string dot oops string dot empty perfect so now that i have my db settings in place the next step is i want to configure this before i even add the implementation so first things first i want to add a reference to it so inside my dependencies i'm going to add a reference to my formula one dynamo uh, services so now i can utilize it there and the first thing I'm going to go to my app settings here and inside my app settings, I'm going to add, first of all, my Dynamo, Dynamo TV, actually Dynamo tables. Is this what I called it? Let's check. Let us check. Yeah. Dynamo DB tables. So let's copy this. And here, all I'm going to specify is my driver's table so copy this again and my driver's table is what we have called it inside terraform so if i go here inside my terraform you can see it is called f1 app data dev1 so that's going to be it and as you can see here this is going to be for the dev environment if i uh, so it should be here but if i have a qa so app settings.qa.json this could be qa so on so on you can see the pattern of matching all of these together and then the other stuff that I want to add here as well, since I'm already working on my uh, app settings, it's going to be my AWS configuration. And I'm just going to give it some default configuration, which is going to be the profile that's going to be utilizing. And I'm going to say it's going to utilize the default one that currently exists when I did the AWS configure. And I'm going to specify the region. And this is going to be EU West 1 and it's going to be the, EU, the region that I'm currently operating from. So once I have done all of that, the next step is I want to go to my program.cs and inside my program.cs, I want to inject all of these different configurations. So the first configuration that I want to inject here is going to be my AWS configuration and it's going to be var AWS options equal builder.configuration.get get AWS options. And because I specified that section as AWS, it will be automatically be able to recognize it. Then I'm going to inject it. So builder.services.add default AWS options. And we're going to pass that. The second thing is it's going to be my DB setting. So Dynamo DB configuration. 
let's add space here. So it's gonna be var. Actually, let's directly do it there. So builder dot services dot configure. And we're gonna put here DB settings. And here we're telling it that it's gonna take the DynamoDB configuration. And let's add this. So I can add it here. Var DynamoDB config equal builder dot configuration dot get section. And the section is gonna be if we go back to our app settings here. It's going to be DynamoDB tables, so let's take that. Perfect. And then lastly, I'm going to put builder dot services dot add singleton. And I'm going to put I Amazon DynamoDB. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify the default region. So in, for any case, it's not able to pick up that default region from the AWS configuration. I want to force it to take it. So here I'm going to say region endpoint and it's going to be EU West 1. So EU West 1 and that's going to be basically it. This is going to be the main configuration that I want to implement. So this is going to be my DynamoDB configuration in order for me to be able to utilize the connection strings and my AWS configuration. So it will be able to read my default credentials from my computer to be able to connect to AWS as well set it directly inside my uh, applications. So inside my DI, so whenever my, DI, my dependency injection container, so uh, whenever I need it inside my services, it will be able to be available there. So once we have done that, now I want to build my repository here. So I'm just going to create a new class. And within this new class, I'm just going to call it Dynamo Driver Repository. And this is going to be pretty straightforward because basically what I'm doing here, I'm going to implement my iDynamoDB. Uh, where is it? iDynamo. Dynamo driver repository. And as you can see, it started to complain. Yo, you don't implement anything. We're going to implement them now. So now that I have added the default items here, it's time for me to start building this out. So the first thing that I want to do here is I want to inject my DynamoDB client. So I'm going to put private read only i Amazon DynamoDB that underscore DynamoDB and I want to initialize it through the constructor. Perfect. The other item that I want to initialize is private read only I options DB settings uh, underscore DB settings. This will require a uh, new get package to be installed inside my class library. That's completely fine. And now I need to add it here. Perfect. And now it's going to ask me to initialize it. Yes, I want to show through the constructor. Perfect. So now that I have these two available for me inside my service, I have my DynamoDB and my DB settings. Now I can actually start building out. So the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to build my get by ID. And let's remove this. We don't really need it right now. The first thing I want to make sure this is an async. And then I'm going to start building it out. So the way this will work is I want to create a request and then I want to attach this request to uh, DynamoDB and then I will send it. And this concept here might seem a bit weird, but basically what I need to do is I need to adjust my information to fit with the DynamoDB structure because it's all going to be JSON based and it's all going to be like a key value pair. So we need to make sure that my information that I'm actually attaching there, it will match with it. Uh, we're going to be seeing step by step right now, but I just wanted to mention this out. It's not going to be as simple as select a statement from the database. So first things first here is I want to put var request equal new get 
item request and as you can see here the get item request is already built in so we can see here that we will have some kind of a structure that we need to follow and it's going to ask me what is the table name that you want to get the information from i can just go to db settings dot value dot drivers table and this is going to be the first thing then it's going to ask me to get the key equal new dictionary Diction dictionary yes and this is gonna be attribute value and let's fill it up so it's gonna ask me first about my driver's name and new attribute value and here we're gonna put the driver name and then I'm gonna specify my team so we're gonna put team name Again, it's going to be the same thing, a new attribute value, and we're going to say here team name. Not team team, team name. Let's fix this typo. And here also, let's fix it. Perfect. So now I have done that. The next step is I want to send this request. So I'm going to put var response equal await underscore dynamodb dot get item async and I'm gonna pass this request and then once I have done that all I'm gonna do is if response dot http status code not equal to http status code of okay where is okay okay Actually, let's just type OK, and it should automatically appear. OK, so if it's not equal to that, I'm just going to return null. So then I need to check that there is actually data back. So I'm going to put if response dot item dot count is less or equal to zero. I'm going to also return null. Lastly, that I have passed all of these checks, I'm gonna serialize the response back because basically we're gonna receive it as JSON. I wanna serialize it into my DTO in order for me to utilize it. So for this, we're gonna put var driver document because we're gonna return back a document. I'm gonna put document dot, can I utilize this one? Not the reflection, make sure here, as you can see from my, uh, Autocomplete, you have something for the reflection, then you have the um, DynamoDB, and then you have runtime. Make sure you choose the DynamoDB v2, and then we're gonna put dot from attribute map, and then we're gonna put here the response dot item. Then what we wanna do is we're gonna get the driver, so driver equal JSON serializer dot deserialize into which format we want it to the driver DTO. And then lastly, I'm gonna put the driver document. Perfect. And the last thing, actually we need to make sure that it's in JSON format. So we're gonna put here dot to JSON. And lastly, we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna return the driver. So I can just return it like this. Perfect. So this is my get by ID. Now I'm going to be working on my ad and the ad is also going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be the reverse of this. So right now, basically we got it as document and we serialize it to an object. Now we want to convert this object into a document in order for us to send. So it's going to be async. I'm going to be removing that and we're going to put var driver document equal JSON serializer dot serialize and it's going to be the entity that we have, which is going to be my driver. I'm going to put var driver document. Actually, this is going to be driver JSON because we just took it as JSON. And this is going to be my driver document. Pretty straightforward. Document dot from JSON. So it's completely the reverse. We're going to put driver, driver JSON. And lastly, we're going to put var driver attribute because we're converting it to an attribute we're going to put driver document 
dot to attribute map. So if we take a look at this, we're basically uh, reverting it. See here we're doing from attribute map document. Here we're just doing to attribute map. We're serializing it to JSON uh, from the attribute map. So we're converting it to JSON. And then here we can see we are converting it to JSON. So it's the complete opposite of what we are doing here. Once I have done that, now I want to specify my uh, add. And something to keep in mind here is that um, DynamoDB does not have the concept of add and update separately. It's the same uh, implementation. So basically what I mean by here is um, whenever we're trying to do uh, an add inside our DynamoDB, we're basically doing a put. It takes the put and it's basically what it does. Whenever we send it an, a record, it will check if it already exists inside our database. If it does exist, it will add it. If not, uh, if it does exist, it will update it. If it doesn't, it will add. So uh, there is no like oh, add by itself. We always need to do a put in our DynamoDB and then DynamoDB will do the logic if see if it's gonna update a record or add a record. So for that, what we wanna do is for put request equal new put item request. And it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna specify the table name, similar to what we have done before, which is gonna be underscore db settings dot value dot drivers table. And then we're gonna put the item that we wanna update. And this item is gonna be the driver attribute that we have. Perfect. And lastly, we're just gonna send this request to DynamoDB. So we're gonna put var uh, response equal underscore DynamoDB, actually let's await this, await underscore DynamoDB dot put item async. And then we're gonna put spe specify the put request. And lastly, I'm gonna return the response dot HTTP status code. If it's equal, equal to okay, we're gonna, it's gonna return true. If it's not, it's gonna return false. And that way we can track it. And now we're gonna have the update and the delete. And basically the update is gonna be the exactly same thing as the add, because as we said, it uh, does not uh, differentiate. And the reason that we wanna make it separate here, in case we wanna add an additional logic to the update, that for example, that uh, we want to, for example, format something or add additional data field, etc., etc. It makes sense to make them separate. We can make them in one. It doesn't really, uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but it's always good to have separation of concerns. So we're gonna keep this as is. And lastly, we're gonna have the delete. So first of all, I'm gonna make it async as well. And then here, all I'm gonna do is just take this. And I wanna update this. So instead of having this, let me take the information from my get because I wanna base the delete on the driver name and the team name. So I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna go down all the way down. I'm gonna ask for this inside my uh, parameters. I'm gonna update my interface as well. Perfect. And now let's build our delete. So the delete is gonna be also pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna put var delete request equal new delete request. And we're gonna follow the same thing, table name. Delete item request. So we're gonna put a table name, it's gonna be the same thing as before, which is gonna be underscore db settings dot value dot drivers table. Then we want to specify the key, which is basically what we're going to be able to do select on in order for us to delete. It's going to be the exact same thing that we currently have here. So I'm just going to copy it. Basically, we're creating a dictionary for driver's name, driver team in order for us to match them inside our data. And then I'm going to put var response equal to await underscore dynamodb dot delete item async. And here I'm gonna specify my delete request. And all I'm gonna return here is response dot HTTP status code. If it's gonna equal to okay, it's gonna turn true. If not, it's gonna turn false. Perfect. So now I have done this. 
The next step for me is I want to inject this service inside my uh, program.js. So here, I'm going to just inject it here. I'm just going to put DynamoDB repository and I DynamoDB repository. Let's fix those references. And as well, the best thing is I want to put .NET build, making sure everything is building. Okay, perfect. So now that we have done all of that, now that we have created our services, we have configured it, we have done all of the uh, wiring and the infrastructure that's needed, all what's left is to create a controller in order for us to utilize it and test this out. So let's do this right now. So we're gonna start actually by adding a new controller and we're gonna call this Dynamo. We already have a driver's controller, so Dynamo drivers or drivers Dynamo controller, something like that. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to utilize the same base class. So I'm just going to take this. Actually, let me take everything that exists here and then I can update it one by one. So let's take this and let's do it like this. Okay, perfect. So first thing that I want to update is my driver's controller. So I just want to add all of the references. Okay, perfect. And the first thing that I want to do here is I want to add my service. So I'm going to put private read only i driver dynamo driver repository. I'm going to call it driver repository and I'm going to inject it through the constructor. So let's do this right now. I just make it look better. And here I'm just going to add it to the end. It's going to be i dynamo driver repository driver repository and we're gonna put here underscore driver repository equal driver repository perfect so first thing that I want to do here is I need to remove this I don't need that out and for the get driver instead of basing it on the ID I'm gonna base it on string driver name and string team name so this is gonna be the crucial role and we don't really need this. So instead of re relying on the unit of work, I'm gonna put underscore driver repository dot get by ID. And as we can see here, it's expecting the driver name and the team name. So we're gonna put driver name and team name. Perfect. Now, basically I don't need any of this. So I'm just gonna remove this. And instead of returning the result, I'm gonna return a driver. So the reason that I'm doing it this way is just to illustrate how easy it is to do the migration from unit of work or any types of other database to this repository pattern. Again, there's multiple ways you can implement it, but it's just a simplistic way to see how we can move from a traditional database to a DynamoDB, which is going to be a non-SQL database. So now that we have done the get driver, let's do the add driver. So instead of relying on driver request, we're going to be basically getting the driver DTO and we're going to be removing the mapper we don't need it we're going to be removing this unit of work and i'm actually relying on unit of work we're going to put i driver repository dot add and we're going to pass the driver and that should be it and add basically here it's going to return for us a boolean so i'm going to put here var result and i'm going to say if result equal equal to false I'm just going to return a bad request. So that's for the adding of the driver. Updating the driver, it should be exactly the same thing because basically what we're doing here, as we said, it's going to be the same action. So we're going to put driver DTO and I'm just going to update all of this. We don't need them. And we're going to be returning a no content. Everything is successful. And we're going to also be relying on some of the add. We're going to put the update. And lastly, we don't really need that get all driver. We can remove it. I can remove this as well. We don't need it. And what I want to do here is for the deleted driver, it's going to be the exact same thing as the get. So we're going to be using the driver name and the team name. So we'll take this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically remove this. I'm going to put underscore driver repository dot delete and I'm going to pass the driver name and I'm going to pass the team name. And then, oh, I will not need any of this. I'm not going to need any of this. All I'm going to be doing is 
I'm gonna change this to result and I'm gonna say this. If results equal false, I'm gonna return bad request. Other than that, I'm gonna be returning no content. Perfect. I can see that there's some kind of an error, so let's try to investigate. And here we can see that the return type I need to update. I forgot to update this. So let's put this on a new line so we can make sure that we're getting the best result. So here, instead of returning result, first of all, I want to return the driver. And second, instead of returning driver ID, what I want to return is basically what I need to get do and get, which is going to be the driver name and the team name. So we're going to put driver name equal driver dot driver name and then we're going to put team name equal driver dot team name and once i have done that now we can actually test and experiment so let's open our application now inside uh, swagger and as you can see here i have my four endpoint available which is going to be the get the post put and delete let's try with the post i click on try it out we see the driver's name i'm just going to put lewis the team name i'm gonna put mercedes driver number is gonna be 44 and i'm gonna put this one 1980 for example and i'm gonna click on execute and we got a 201 which is basically mean it has successfully been added and what i'm gonna go also is i'm gonna get oh basically i'm gonna open my dynamodb here and basically I'm going to go explore the data which exists as we can see too because I tested it before once but we can try it again so I have all of this information now let me try to add it uh, add a new one so if you go back to swagger I'm going to add another one I'm going to put here uh, for example George I'm going to put also for Mercedes number is 63 and date of birth I don't know 2010 execute and we can see we got a 201 and now if I go back here to DynamoDB and I refresh we should be able to see that I have a George information as well which is perfect so now if I go back and let's try actually doing the get request and it's gonna ask me for my driver name so I'm just gonna put Lewis and team name is gonna be Mercedes I'm gonna click on execute as we can see here I got the response back which is perfect let us try now the put so inside the put here, try it out. I'm just gonna copy the same body that I have that I've done before. I'm just gonna change the date of birth for George. And instead of 2010, I'm gonna put the year 2000. And I'm gonna click on execute. We can, got, we can see that we got a 204. Let me check my database. I can click on refresh. We can see here that the year has been updated to 2000, which is perfect. And now if I do, I get for George. So if I go all the way back up here, and I put here George instead of Lewis, 1J, and I click on execute. We can see here that we got the updated information, which is perfect. So the last one that I have here is gonna be the delete. And for the delete, all I'm gonna do is just gonna uh, click on try it out, put the driver name, which is George, put the team, which is Mercedes, click on execute. We can see we got a 204. And now if I refresh here, we can see George is gone from the table. And if I do a get again for George, we should see not found. So where is it? This is the get request. I click on execute. We got a 404 not found because the driver has been deleted. And basically this is it. So let's do a quick summary of what we have covered already today. So in essence, the first thing that we have done is we have discovered or basically we have discussed DynamoDB. We have created the table utilizing the AWS CLI. Once we have created the table through the AWS CLI, we have created it through Terraform. We saw the step by step of how we can create it. Then we started integrating uh, DynamoDB and ASP.NET together. We installed the packages, we created the class library, we created the services, we injected all of the different references inside our API. And then basically we created a CRUD operator in our basically CRUD control in order for us to manage our database. If you have any questions or if there is any extra point that you would like me to delve, me, uh, to delve into more, please let me know and I'll make sure to cover it in much more details. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share and subscribe if it was. It will really help the channel. As well, if you would like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.